welcome to another amazing episode of Say It Online, where we help digital agency owners stop just randomly shouting into the void and start communicating meaningfully and effectively in this digital age. I'm your host, Say Gabriel, and this episode was brought to you by our sponsor, Nancy Content. If you're sick of conversion content being a huge pain in your agency's butt, especially websites, campaigns, etc., let's talk. With the smoothest content process ever, a team of unbelievably skilled and organized content strategists and years of subcontracting experience, Anansi is looking to make your life as a digital agency owner unbelievably easier. Just head, if you're interested, to anansicontent.com, that's A-N-A-N-S-I content.com and hit Let's Talk. And now, without further ado, here's our episode. And welcome to another awesome episode of Say It Online, where we help digital agency owners communicate in the digital era in awesome and effective ways. I am uh, your host, Say Gabriel. I am the owner of Anansi Content, and I am super, super stoked today to be here with a special treat, which is talking to Abby Wood, who actually runs another content strategy agency that also works quite a bit white label with digital agencies. So Abby, super, super excited to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. (laughs) Awesome. And uh, I am excited to nerd out with you today a little bit on uh, some of these communication challenges we often see with the digital agencies. Um, I'm sure it will be super, super relevant for our clients. Uh, But before we get, not our clients, sorry, (laughs) that was maybe a Freudian slip. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, our listeners, not just our clients, why don't you take a few moments to just uh, tell us about yourself personally and then give us a quick overview of your business? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, my business is called The Content Lab and we are based from lovely Waterford in Ireland. Um, so way, way over the waters from you guys, but still facing the same kind of challenges with communication and stuff as as over in the US and Canada. But yeah, so it's uh, we do pretty much the same as you guys. So we help digital agencies connect better with their audiences and provide white, white label content services as well. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Awesome. So before we get uh, a little bit deeper into some of these things, what brought you to the white label world in particular? Oof, well, myself and my partner actually set up a digital agency uh, called Island Website Design about eight years ago. And I always ran the content section and like yourself, I'm a bit of a word nerd and, um, you know, just absolutely loved writing for, you know, everybody and about everything. And um, we just realized that there was a huge gap in the market for digital agencies with content writing needs because it's such an essential part of, you know, the online world and helping your customers reach their customers. And yet so many digital agencies either don't work with content writers or they don't, or they, they do it themselves. And which is just painful for, you know, and and takes so much time onto their plate. That's already brimming with fullness of other, other work to do. But yeah, so I I saw a huge uh, gap in the market of helping other digital agencies and obviously running the digital agency with my partner, you know, you kind of, you know, where, projects usually run into issues with content and, you know, how to sell it to clients, you know, is is usually quite an issue for digital agencies and that kind of thing. So that's basically how I started. You know, I, I have a few friends that run digital agencies and, you know, they, they were always at me to write for them and stuff. So I said, I know, we're, we're going to just, we're going to bite the bullet and just go for it. So um, I launched the content lab five months ago today. So yeah, it's, it's going well. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on taking that leap. You know, I resonate quite a bit with your uh, your story. For those of our listeners who aren't familiar, I also started out uh, in the full on digital agency space and uh, realized, you know, especially since my background was originally in the writing and content side, that that was the piece that I loved. And I think you probably saw the same as I, Abby, which is that there is so much 
in the content space in terms of producing it, putting it together, etc, that it really can be a whole job and in fact, a whole agency in itself. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool that you're able to identify that and kind of take that leap. Um, Now, do you still work at all uh, with your husband and his agency as well? Or have you kind of transitioned to focusing just on this? Or, you know, is that kind of maybe a future goal? So uh, he's actually one of my clients. <laughs> yep. So uh, we've we've officially kind of separated the two businesses now. But he is one of my clients. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, that's a whole other wheelbarrow of issues right there working with a spouse. But <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, uh, that is something you know. My own spouse is not very computer inclined at all. He is a carpenter and uh, very much a physical person, a mechanical oriented person. But I hear a lot (laughs) from people about the challenges that they have working with their spouses. So that definitely could be a whole other episode. And who knows, maybe we'll get into that a little bit today. But uh, aside from uh, working with your spouse, uh, what are some of the other communication issues, you know, you ran up against uh, either in your digital agency days, uh, your kind of traditional digital agency days, or more recently as you've been transitioning into content or has, you know, working with your spouse been uh, the large part of it? (laughs) Well, I guess... Like I, I still do a lot of writing for for end clients. So and I've I've noticed more as I've kind of partnered with a lot of digital agencies, just the difference in, you know, each kind of segment's needs. So um like digital agencies usually they understand how to talk to their ideal audience and stuff, but with but with end users, uh, you know, customers and stuff, I think there's this thing that's a common misconception about communicating online is that it has to be fancy or, you know, it has to be formal. So a lot of, I find that a lot of end clients really struggle to kind of communicate, but also to connect with their audience online. Uh, You know, I mean, it's, what I always say is, it's like, if somebody comes in to say your shop or, you know, your, your business premises, just talk to them online as you do in person, you know, and if, if that's, you know, a little bit funny, then make sure that, you know, your online voice is saying that as well. And, you know, if you're a little bit cheeky, definitely, you know, you definitely put that online. It's really important to kind of give them that, that consistent brand. So, you know, if you're known for being, you know, cheeky and fun, then be cheeky and fun online, you know, make sure that their in-person experience is exactly the same as online. And that goes across social media that goes, you know, even to email marketing, it's across absolutely everything. I I think that's one of the main communication issues that I find with, with end users is just to keep it conversational really. And when working with digital agencies, sometimes you'll find that they can get a little bit too technical because when we live, breathe, eat everything, the digital world, it's like second nature to us. Whereas Mm -hmm. somebody's coming in and looking for a website, they have no idea what, you know, a domain name is. They have no idea what hosting is. They don't know the difference between the two. You know, they don't know the difference between a logo and what a brand is. So I, I think it's it's important to kind of remember that, you know, everyone's experiences are very different of the industry that you work in. So, I mean, like, you know, we, we could go on and on about, you know, search engine optimization and stuff. But for people that aren't in that industry, we could be speaking Greek to them, you know, it's just, it's like a completely different language. So I I think it's kind of one of the important communication factors online is just being able to communicate on, on a very simple level. Mm, Absolutely. And I'm actually kind of hearing two sides of the same coin here, both for kind of end clients, as well as the digital agencies, where, For end clients, you know, there's this struggle to be conversational and this kind of perception that you need to be a little bit more formal or have it be more polished or et cetera. But with digital agencies as well, uh, kind of remind us that even when you're being conversational, you really need to not get jargony, like remember who it is that you're being conversational with and make sure that you're talking to them in a way that they themselves understand. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. Exactly. I think because, 
you know, we, we tend to spend all day in, in our own heads and in our own industry and stuff. And like, if, if you're working with the people on the same level as you, then, you know, it, it's kind of taken that, you know, you understand what a KPI is or a CTA or whatever, but somebody that's brand new to, to the online world is like, what the heck is that? You know, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a good idea just to, you know, keep it simple. That's what I say. You know, if, if you're doing something that you absolutely love and, you know, you understand it inside and out, you should be able to explain it super simply. And if you can't, then you haven't got a, you know, a perfect grasp on what it is. So, um, yeah, keep it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. That is actually one of our core values. And uh, it is one that uh, is, uh, well, it's a simple concept, but it's not always easy, shall we say. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, definitely, definitely agree with you there. Okay. And how would you say that for yourself personally, the way that you communicate verbally has affected your own success, especially during this transition? Well, you could probably already tell that I just talk and talk and talk, <laughs> which I, I think is good. It's, you know, it's good to be able to keep a conversation going and stuff, but it's it's also good to know when to stop. And I think that one of my own issues is I can just, you know, keep talking, especially when it comes to content as well, because, you know, it's it's something that I'm very passionate about. And there's so oh, many, preach. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and because it, there's, it, there's so many different facets to it. And, you know, you're the same as me. You know, we could just continue all day talking about content. But I think, yeah, I think we kind of have the same approach to it. You know, it's it's nice to be able to just talk and, you know, be open and honest and, you know, just talk nerdy about words for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, I definitely understand that. So what are some, you know, for people who also like to quote unquote, talk nerdy, which I love doing <laughs> too, about, uh, you know, if not content, then SEO or marketing or design or branding or all of these different things. Do you have any experiences or any recommendations or observations around how we can speak a little bit more simply without confusing people? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd say fully embrace that, you know, you love your, your subject. Absolutely fully embrace that, but just kind of reel it in every so often and just, you know, kind of remember what it was like starting up maybe. So, you know, as it's kind of, yeah, just keep it simple and clear and concise. I mean, you know, we, we can always just continue talking and talking and talking, but sometimes it's best to keep it just very concise and simple. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Keeping it concise, easier said than done. So what are the sorts, uh, what are some of the sorts of things that you've done and that you continue to do to improve your communication to clients, whether you, that is in the sense of, you know, agency partners or end clients? I'm a big believer in, so for me, obviously, I write, that's how I usually communicate. So reading, just reading, 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 you know, the, the more you read, the better you become at writing. And I guess like if, you know, if you're getting up on a stage and you want to learn how to speak better to your audience and communicate better to, you know, large groups of people, you'd, you'd watch, you know, other people doing it online. And of course, you know, you can record yourself and watch yourself back and, you know, analyze yourself that way. It's like, you know, and for writers to go back and read stuff that you've read before, see how you'd improve it now, you know, that kind of thing. I think it's just, it's very much a dedication to improvement. And even just having that mindset that you're dedicated to improving your craft, whether that is design or whether it is, you know, website development or whether it's digital marketing or content strategy. One of my favorite things to do is to dedicate, you know, a couple of hours every Friday to just working on my own skill set. So, you know, and it's a luxury to be able to say, oh, now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to set aside two hours once a week just to, you know, dedicate to bettering my own skill set. 
But it's definitely worth the investment because you can learn so much. And of course, you know, reaching out to other people that do the same stuff as you, that's always fantastic. And and looking at other people in your industry and how they approach, you know, what you do and what they do is it's fantastic to just, you know, it's you can learn so much just from how other people are working and, you know, what how you think you can improve by implementing some of their stuff. And, you know, maybe you you would prefer to skip some of their stuff as well. It's it's invaluable just to just to keep studying. You know, you never stop learning. That's what I always say. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the really kind of valuable things I'm hearing here is that yes, there's a lot of kind of individual things that you can do to improve your skill set, etc. Improve not just communication, but also your own trade and your own skills. But I'm also hearing that it's and I agree that it's really, really important to cultivate the mentality that yes, there is always room for improvement, not just that, that there's room for improvement, but that you want to improve, you're seeking to improve, you're actively looking for ways to improve all the time, not just while you're taking a course, for example. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, as long as you you tell yourself that you're still open to improvement and that there is room to improve, because, you know, no matter how great you get at something, you know, you can always improve on what you do. But I, I think that it's, it's absolutely integral to just, you know, keep that open mind that, and especially in the digital space as well, you know, there are constantly new innovations and new ways of trying stuff. And, you know, mm. it's, it's so important to, to just stay ahead of the trends and to keep up with stuff. And I mean, you know, yeah, you know, you can read stuff online, you can watch stuff online, but also attending events in person as well. And that, that's wow. really handy. And, important to work on your communication skills is by meeting people in person and you know seeing people talking on stage and you know I I find whenever I go to say content meetups or you know digital agency meetups or whatever it's so invigorating to just be surrounded by people that absolutely love what they do as much as you love what you're doing what you do sorry and you know it's it really gives you a boost Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I agree. Uh, you know, and, and while I am so, so, so grateful that we can have these experiences, you know, where you can be, you know, as uh, we were saying before this call, relaxing uh, down, you can be settling down for the evening. You know, I can be just coming in from lunch on the other side of the world and we can have these interactions There's something about face to face. Uh, that I personally find energizing or invigorating. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to get out of the office sometimes, <laughs> especially when the office is your house. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. And there's there's something really just. I think that you know when you when you connect with someone offline as well, you know you do form that bond in person. That even if say you you met up once a week with someone online and you know chatted over Zoom or whatever, but it's actually sitting down with that person and you know going for a drink or having a meal out or something, there's just, you know, it really brings that closeness. And I think that's incredibly important for people like us that work in the digital sphere, you know, with your customers, go and meet up with them in person, you know, put, put a name to the face, you know, obviously it's a bit different if it's, you know, in different continents, but, um, you know, it's invaluable just, you know, sitting down and then, you know, they, they feel more for you once they've met you in person and you know they chat with you for an hour over lunch sometime and you know that partnership fostering is incredibly important in what we do because there's there's so much competition with website designers and you know content people and everything there's you know a thousand thousand of us for a penny everywhere you know and around the globe as well so that that personal touch means so much Mm hmm. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I'm also kind of liking uh, what I'm hearing here, which is this idea that meeting other people in your field uh, is important too. not just, you know, getting out and uh, meeting clients and kind of making that good impression on them. But also, you know, adding, meeting other people who do what you do and kind of getting inspired in that sense and potentially maybe even changing the definition of competition a little bit. Am I reading too much into it or was that kind of what you were saying as well? No, no, absolutely. That's that's 100 percent right. You know, I'm, I'm a big I'm a big believer in the abundance mindset, you know, and, you know, of course, 
if it's a small town and you know there's 60 web designers or 60 content writers it's it, there's going to be that competition element but you know when people work in the same industry they're facing the same problems they have the same issues and to actually be able to approach someone and say hey i'm i'm really struggling with this right now have you ever experienced it and for that person to turn around and say yeah this is how i coped with it or oh that's you know yeah, that's a really difficult thing to to struggle with. You know, let's chat about it. Like that that support is, it's just, I can't even describe it. <laughs> you know, to have that level of support, you know, with anyone is, is fantastic. But especially because sometimes, you know, people like yourself, you know, working from home and you can get quite isolated and it's, you know, it's good to get out of that place and to share your not only your worries and your problems, but also your triumphs, you know, because so often people forget to celebrate what they achieve. And, you know, having people in the industry that are really backing you up and really, you know, really just supporting you in everything that you do is incredibly important. And it's it's different from family and friends support, I think, because when you work in the same industry, you know the pressures that are there, you know you know, the issues that are there. Whereas family and friends, they might not be able to understand, let alone, you know, the issues that we're facing, but what we do. So to be able to just say, hey, you know, I'm struggling with this right now. And some say, oh yeah, no, I, I had that a couple of years ago. And, you know, this is how I, this is how I solved it is, is a fantastic opportunity. So I always encourage people to, to reach out to other people that either in our industry or, you know, that do the same thing as they do. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, we at Anansi are also huge fans as the Abundant Mindset. Uh, I know one that's one of the many things that we've connected over. This idea, you know, that uh, it doesn't have to be, success doesn't have to be at the expense of others. Can you expand a little bit more on that Abundance Mindset and what it kind of means to you and means to your business? Yeah, so I mean... You know, I, you could call me a little bit of a hippie if you like, but I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, you don't have to drag other people down to, to get to the top or to get, you know, to become successful. You know, you can, I'm a big fan of building other people up and supporting other people. And, you know, hopefully they do the same to me kind of thing. So yeah, the abundance mindset, it's basically instead of viewing, you know, other people that do the same thing as you as, you know, competition and, you know, you've got to try and, you know, scupper their advances and everything. It's very much just, okay, we have the same experiences. You know, we might go head to head on a job occasionally, but, you know, we're going to be facing the same, the same things. So we might as well kind of team up and face it together or just support each other or, you know, that kind of thing. But I think it's a, it's a less stressful way of doing business, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm I'm not able for um you know the the competition and the stress side, and I I think once you've got the abundance mindset, you can focus more on your own business rather than what your competitors are doing and worrying about that. Ooh, I really like that way of putting it. That's gold. When you think about the abundance mindset, what I'm hearing is that. It's, oh man, I just love this. Uh, the abundance mindset being that it gives you the freedom to focus on your own business instead of just worrying about what everybody else is doing. I love that because you're right to some degree. Uh, you do need to be aware of what's going on in the industry and there will be times where you go head to head. But ultimately, if you're just worrying about running everybody else who's kind of like running their race or doing their thing, maybe race is even the wrong analogy, then you're missing out on the opportunity to be investing that energy and that attention into your own business and, uh, you know, moving yourself ahead, uh, moving, you know, along in your own track, which, you know, as I've really come to realize over the years is that. Success is often about being a category of one in a certain area. It's not necessarily about beating everybody else in that same area. It's about figuring out what particular angle or what particular approach or what particular problem ultimately you are really phenomenal at 
and really, really getting good at solving that. That's uh, really insightful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely. I, I agree with you with your analogy there completely. I mean, you know, it's just think about, you know, you only have, you know, a certain amount of energy. And if you're spending all of that energy on worrying about your competitors, then you haven't got any energy left to work on your own stuff to, you know, to better your own company and stuff. But not only that, you know, with everybody living on social media, you know, people may project a completely different image than what is truthful anyway. So if if you're sitting there and, you know, scrolling through Facebook and, you know, you're, you know, the, the biggest competitor that you have is constantly on holiday in Mauritius and doing this and doing that and just signed amazing contracts and stuff. You don't actually know what's going on in their life, really, underneath it all. You know, I think that a lot of people project these amazing lives and, you know, they still have the same problems. They still have the same issues. So rather than getting hung up on, oh, well, they've just done this and, you know, I, I haven't gone on holiday for two years or, you know, I'm struggling to pay myself a wage or something. You know, if you focus on what matters to you rather than what matters to other people, then you're just going to be happier, I think, in general. Mm, agreed. Absolutely agreed. And uh, I love how you pointed out that it's not just about business. There is this, it's interesting because social media is such an amazing tool to leverage, but at the same time, I think it is important, as you say, to remember (laughs) that this is a curated view that people are offering you of their lives. It is often not representing the dirty and ugly and painful and dark bits And uh, if you just uh, focus on them, you can lose yourself in that focus and uh, forget, you know, what your own goals are and what your own version of success is and your own journey towards that. So how is the way that you communicate, but also that you perceive communication and approach it, uh, how has that shifted over time? I think that the way I've approached communication has changed over the last few years. I've made it a lot simpler and, you know, a lot more, not to the point because I think that sounds a bit harsh, but, you know, it's it's very just kind of being honest and being open and just saying, you know, if something hasn't gone to plan, you know, this hasn't gone to plan, but this is how we're going to fix it in the future. And I, I think that open open communication and honest communication will set aside any company from their competitors and, 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 you know, any company in general, really, because I find that the, you know, the best policy is honesty. So just, I think my own communication, it's a lot more simple than what it used to be. You know, I, I pretty much, I just say it as it is, but not as harsh if you, if you get my meaning. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, I definitely get your meeting. Uh, Now, I'm really curious. You mentioned both open and honest communication. And you also mentioned how you say something can really affect it, not just what you're saying, but how, as you said, you now speak in a simpler and less harsh way. But I'd love love to hear what's what do you consider to be the difference between open and honest communication? Are there is there a difference? I think there is. I think with with open communication, you know, you're inviting communication to come back, you know, so it's it's kind of you can have closed communication where it's, you know, you're telling somebody something. But with with open community, this is my own interpretation now. (laughs) Don't get a dictionary. (laughs) um, With with open communication, I see that as it's a two way conversation, at least two way conversation anyway. So, you know, it's about saying how you're feeling and how you're doing and, you know, what is and isn't happening. And then the person that you're talking to is also saying that. And I think that's incredibly important in business as well that, you know, you're just, you're going to get absolutely nowhere unless you're, you're open with clients. They need to be able to come to you if they're worried about something or, you know, they're struggling with something and, you know, or they're concerned that, you know, maybe a a marketing campaign isn't performing or whatever. They, They need to be able to feel like they can come to you discuss that with you, you know, get a few answers or maybe just, you know, 
get the answer. We're not quite sure right now, but, you know, give it time. But they need to be able to actually feel comfortable in approaching you because if if they can't approach you, then they're going to approach somebody else, you know? And I, I think openness is is definitely integral to how I do business anyway. It it might not be for everybody, but I, I'm a big believer and and just in how I deal with with companies, I prefer them to be open with me. So I I prefer to be open with my customers as well. Um, honest, well, that's kind of, I guess, is a, a personal preference. I, I personally prefer people to be honest, you know, kind of no matter no matter what with, with certain things. But I, I think, you know, that level of trust needs to be there. You need to be able to, well, your customers need to be able to approach you and to feel like they're getting the truth, you know, or as much truth as, as they need right now. And if they don't have that, then there's a serious misalignment there. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just kind of taking a few notes here. Uh, Some of the things that you said that really jumped out at me are that open communication, actually, this isn't something you said, this is something I kind of pulled from what you were saying, is that open communication is really about creating a dynamic. It's not just about saying things in a certain way. I'm kind of hearing that there's an aspect of listening in there too and kind of creating a safe dynamic where the client feels comfortable communicating honestly and candidly with you, not just, you know, you're being candid and honest, but in such a way that, you know, uh, they might feel a little bit hesitant to do the same in return. Uh, I really, really liked what you said here about if they're not communicating candidly with you, they're communicating candidly with someone else. And to some degree, you know, I think it is a personal approach choice from business to business, you know, how open you care to be ranging from, you know, full transparency to just, you know, just creating that dynamic of safety and no more than that. But I think uh, what I'm hearing from you is that part of the reason that you do it is because you know that it is a two-way street and you also know that it's an important part of building trust. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Yeah. You've, you've hit the nail on the head there, you know, and I know you guys as well are pretty, you know, you, you prefer to partner with your customers rather than just, you know, serve them or provide them with, with solutions. And I I think that, you know, fostering that environment where they can approach you and, and say, you know, the truth is a lot better than them saying what they think you want to hear or you feeling like you have to kind of, you know, say what they want to hear as well. But I'm, I'm a big, big believer in active listening as well. And um, because people will tell you exactly what they're thinking if you just listen. And, and, and it's a very undervalued skill, I guess, is, is active listening is really taking on board what people are saying to you and, you know, ad- addressing what they're saying as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, active listening is a huge part of this. Uh, everything you're saying is just, uh, really resonating with me today. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to just shift the tone of the conversation a little bit and, uh, ask a little bit about something that I know, uh, many of our listeners, uh, will find relevant, which is just this idea of client copy. Uh, now client copy is, well, for a lot of people, it's a big challenge. It's extremely frustrating in a lot of ways. And I'm just wondering what are, I think we're all kind of familiar with some of the problems that come along with client copies. So, uh, you know, you can maybe touch on those just super, super briefly, but what are some of the ways that you found to address kind of the biggest issues that you see with the, with the copy process in general, but in particular, you know, uh, project copy websites and marketing campaigns and that kind of fun stuff, maybe blog posts as well. Yeah. So holy moly, client copy was always the worst drain of time on any web project that our agency ever worked on. It's it's as simple as that. Either, you know, the client isn't providing copy full stop. So, you know, you can kind of be waiting on them and waiting on them uh, or, you know, the, the copy can't really be used. So sometimes you'll find, you'll find that Somebody will literally copy and paste their competitors and just say, put my name in where theirs is. And yeah, that's that's their idea. 
I am so I have never thankfully seen that. Have you that never? Oh, you're campaign. yeah, you're lucky. I've I've had a few customers because you know either either they've you know like a decade ago when I first started writing, it was you know people didn't understand the necessity of unique original content you know it was kind of like sure I can just copy and paste that's no bother you know it's great look it's working for them so it'll work for me so they didn't quite understand you know that and I guess it's all about client education kind of tackling that mentality is just Google is gonna punish you okay (laughs) so just don't do it just just don't do it but I guess client education and that could be part of you know the selling process as well is you know educating them on how to how to really view their own website and view the the contents part of that process as well. So I guess, you know, that has been an issue and it's been an issue for for some of my clients as well when when their customers has pr- have provided their own their own content. It can be a bit messy sometimes. Other times, you know, the the content isn't just a very good quality, so there's a lot of grammar issues, there's a lot of, you know, spelling and punctuation errors that kind of thing. So that that can be tidied up. But yeah, I I guess and then, of course, there's the issue of, you know, as a digital agency, if you're having to write it yourself. So, you know, I, I work with a, a few web designers that kind of have been trying to do everything themselves, which is just absolutely crazy. No one person can, you know, be expected to do absolutely everything on, what you know, on numerous projects at any one point in time and, you know, still be able to kind of have a good life business balance going on. Oh, yeah. That's where I started out. I was like, sure, I'll just make whole websites and also write all the copy because I love writing copies. So why not? Yep. Yeah. That, that sounds <laughs> totally <wrong>. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, right. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, it's and because it's kind of like you wouldn't expect, you know, somebody that specializes in logo design being able to create you know, like an email marketing campaign because they're completely different skill sets. So I think, you know, when it comes to content, maybe try, you know, explaining that to customers that, you know, this this is a skill set, just like you wouldn't want to design your own logo or, you know, possibly take your own photographs. You kind of need a professional to write the content for you to get the results that you want out of it. So I guess it's pretty much bringing it, it's always bringing it back to, you know, having that professional image that actually converts, you know, your casual browsers into loyal customers, loyal clients, that kind of thing. But I mean, it the struggle is real when it comes to digital agencies trying to get content out of their customers. And I, I think because, you know, anybody can write, absolutely anybody can write, but to, to be able to write website copy you know, I mean, like, I know that both myself and you have, you know, studied this for years, you know, been writing for years. And, you know, there's always room for improvement for us. So, you know, to for somebody to try and, you know, thrash out a good website, you know, by themselves without any kind of understanding of the, you know, the, the art and the science behind it is, it's going to be tricky. It's absolutely going to be difficult for, for anyone to kind of approach but um, yeah, client copy is, it's something else in its own little world. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And what about for those people, you know, you mentioned at the beginning of this call, and I think that you have already uh, chatted about it a little bit. Uh, for those people who are interested in transitioning from client copy to working with a content strategist like yourself, like the Content Lab, et cetera, what sorts of things can they do to help sell copy easier? <laughs> what sorts of things can they do to help the client uh, or the customer, as you've been saying, uh, understand the value of professional copy? Yeah. So, I mean, like one one thing that I, I tend to do, if it's a one-on-one with the client, um, you can always show them examples of bad copy and good copy and, you know, just highlight the differences between the two and say, you know, this is somebody that that wrote it themselves. Would you buy from them? You know, would you would you invest in their business and then show them the good copy and say, you know, would you, you know, buy from this website? Would you because that's it's very visual and it's very obvious. So it kind of like it's it's not opinion. It's their own take on it. So it's not like, you know, the the agency owner's opinion of why they should do this. It's their own opinion of 
wow, this writing is terrible and it's full of spelling mistakes and no, I'm not going to give them my money. Whereas this one is fantastic. And, you know, I, I want to buy 20 of their lovely products. So I guess it's just, it's all about client education, which I know I've, I've mentioned before, but, you know, it's, it's a difficult one for people that aren't in the industry and, you know, may think that, you know, it's sure it's just a few sentences on the page, you know, but it, they're, you know, you can have an absolutely beautifully designed website, but if the content is terrible, the website is not going to convert. It's kind of the same as if you had a beautifully written website, but the graphics are atrocious. That isn't going to convert either. You know, the two really work together and go hand in hand. And, um, you know, I, I think just showing examples of this, you know, maybe if if they react better to to statistics and stuff, you can show them, you know, how better copy converts, you know, like we, we all know the, the beauty of AB testing and stuff, you know, you can show them examples of, you know, this is well-written copy and this has a conversion rate of this, you know, if, if they're particularly, you know, statistically minded, if they're more into, you know, viewing it, you can show them examples. It works on different levels for different types of clients, I guess, and also their own experiences, because if if they're coming in with kind of low expectations, then they, they're going to be happy with lower quality of work. Whereas if they're coming in with higher expectations and, you know, they're going to want higher quality of work as well. So it, it really does depend on the, the end client, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, just uh, some of these things that you're saying here, which I absolutely agree, educating the client. What I'm hearing is kind of, from day one, helping them see and understand experientially uh, the advantages of professional copy. You know, I love this idea of showing them a website or an example of copy that was just written by a client or written by someone else. And uh, what professionally written copy, especially conversion copy, uh, can really do, you know, I think we've all <laughs> seen and been to those websites that were beautiful, but either you just can't navigate through it, you have no idea what they do, or how to access what they do. And likewise, as well, uh, I know that uh, we, of course, uh, are a little always a little bit more challenged on the visual side where we can write the words, but it takes you know that quality designer to kind of bring it to life with those uh, images and colors and layouts that really kind of make it shine. Absolutely, yeah, and I think that that's another aspect of of how to to sell it, and also to bring in other other elements that you can sell to the client as well. You know, I mean, it's this full brand experience where, you know, they have a fantastic in-person experience. They have, you know, great conversion copy, a beautiful website, the emails that re they receive once they've submitted an online form, uh, still in the same tone, the same voice, everything. And the same with, you know, social media, it all needs to come together and it all needs to be produced to the same quality level. And I, I think that's, you know, it's, it's incredibly important. And, and it's a great sales technique as well, because, you know, this, this idea that, you know, you have a website and it's done, you know, we've all seen the memes of the office where, you know, wrong, a website is never done, but, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, bringing it all together and making sure that they know that this experience for their end client is very much an ongoing process. So it's, it's not just, Oh, I have a Facebook, I have a, a website and now I'm done. It's pretty much like, this is a constant, constant, beautiful living thing that needs investment and time and love put into it in order to, you know, make your business the best it can be online. Yes, absolutely. And this is one of the ways that I know I've observed that the industry is shifting now that a website is more like your entry ticket as opposed to your success path. And things shift all the time, right? Things are shifting in the industry, things are shifting in uh, your business and your industry, whatever that is, you know, I'm seeing an increasing movement towards this idea of continuous improvement, uh, you know, which also, I think, takes a little bit of pressure off the budget. So it's not like we have to do this uh, massively huge, perfect thing that's going to fix all of your problems right off the bat. It's actually more about 
observing the entire experience, prioritizing which pieces of it are more important uh, to work on, and then over time kind of chipping away at uh, all these different elements and aspects that build towards these larger goals and strategies. Yeah, so thank you for sharing. I think that's really cool that you have been able to, uh, I guess, adjust to meet that. Awesome. Well, I am going to wind us down here. I know we could keep chatting about uh, <laughs> copy process. We could just get into the total nerd zone even and uh, stay here for a while. But uh, I am going to wind us down. So uh, as we kind of wrap up here, is there anything that maybe I should have asked about but didn't that you'd like to address? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and that is totally okay too. Um, <laughs> awesome. And uh, if our listeners want to find out more about you, more about the content lab, your process, etc., cetera, uh, where can they check you out? So you can head over to our website, which is thecontentlab.ie, which, you know, for you lovely Americans and Canadians is completely foreign. The .ie is just Ireland. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can head over to there and, you know, drop me a message anytime and you'll get through to me and, you know, we can we can have a chat or whatever. And you could find out a bit about what we do and, you know, what we love. <laughs> Awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you, Abby. It has been awesome talking to you a little bit more about copy, uh, the process about communicating with clients, white labeling, all of these awesome, awesome golden nuggets, I'm sure will be super, super helpful to our listeners. To all of our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to another amazing episode of Say It Online. Uh, that is pretty much a wrap for today. We will have, as usual, all of the show notes online at our website www.anancycontent.com uh, you'll be able to find uh, links to connect with Abby as well as usual uh, any other cool goodies we might have mentioned along the way so I hope you have an excellent rest of your day rest of your week I hope it is both productive and restful and uh, this is Say Gabriel signing off take care And that does it for another amazing episode of the Say It Online podcast. Join us next week. And don't forget to like and subscribe, whether it's iTunes, whatever your favorite podcast player is. It is always, always appreciated. It really makes a difference for us. It helps us get this word out to more people. As always, this episode was brought to you by our sponsor and Say's own business, Anansi Content. If you're a digital agency owner and you're still wasting too much time chasing down content that maybe isn't even all that great, Let's talk. We've spent years working on the best process for selling, planning, and delivering amazing conversion content for your client projects. Better yet, we moosh our process to yours that your client and you have a seamless and amazing experience the entire time through. If you're interested, just go to our website. That's www.anansicontent.com. That's A-N-A-N-S-I content.com. And just click Let's Talk. I'd love to chat with you. Someone else on the team would also love to chat with you too. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day.